this is the sea leading to the plains of Marathon. It was on this land that a small Greek army defeated the invading Persians in the year 490 BC. The Greek victory, many historians claim, saved Western civilization as we know it today. This land has additional historical significance for Greece. It was over this terrain on the final day of the first revival of the modern Olympic Games in Athens in 1896 that the grueling marathon race was run. In a little less than three hours, the first runners were in sight of the great marble stadium where the finish would take place. This magnificent arena that lies beneath the famed Acropolis. As the first runner entered the stadium, a cry went up from 70,000 voices. We are victorious. We are victorious. It was an historic moment. Spiridon Lewis, a young Greek soldier, was about to give Greece its only victory in the track and field competition. Watching this emotional scene inside the stadium that day were 10 American athletes, the entire United States track and field team. They had dominated the track and field events until the marathon. One of them was Ellery Clark, the winner of the long jump and high jump. Ellery Clark represented the BAA, the Boston Athletic Association. Now, 88 years later, his son Ellery Clark returns to the scene of his father's triumphs. Apparently the scene was probably the most thrilling of any Olympiad uh, since that date when Lewis came in at the entrance down there and already primed to do the final lap with him was Crown Prince Constantine and Prince George. And the King of Greece, who was of Danish descent and wearing his naval uniform, took off his cap and wildly shook it around. He's perhaps the most emotional and tickled king in the history of the modern Olympic Games. The enthusiasm, the thrill, the emotion amongst the Greeks from the king and queen on down when the representatives from their country swept the marathon was almost unbelievable. The unofficial statement grew amongst the Greek citizenry, quote, the other events to the Americans, but the marathon to a Greek. And the crescendo, you might say, of the sportsmanship of the entire revival games in 1896 came out better than a Hollywood movie. The Boston group, which of course included my father, had an 18-day odyssey from Boston to Athens, combination of train and boat. Because there was confusion in the Americans' mind over which calendar the Greeks were using, they arrived about 12 days later than they had expected to. And when they checked in at their hotel, which happened to be the old Angleterre, they were shocked to find out that uh, in less than 24 hours, they'd go to the starting post. And the wittiest uh, and uh, you might say most colorful character of the BAA team was definitely Mr. Blake. And in his spare time, he used to muster ardent Greek local boys and uh, reconstruct the formalities of the, the cheer. It went in this way, BAA, ra, ra, ra. B-A-A, ra, ra, ra. B-A-A, ra, ra, ra. That caught on with the king and the queen of Greece, and apparently it, it was adopted by all the local Athenians. When the last event was concluded, my father had a little chat with Bob Garrett and Tom Burke, and he told them that the three of them had performed a very unusual track double. Mr. Garrett won the shot put and the discus. Mr. Burke triumphed in the 100 meters and the 400 meters. And my father took top honors in the running long jump and the running high jump. My father, in his autobiography, had a most touching summary of the importance of the 1896 games to the entire American team. Let me, if I may, just read it to you. For the time itself, nothing could equal this first revival, the flavor of the Athenian soil, the feeling of helping to bridge the gap between the old and the new, the indefinable poetic charm 
of knowing oneself, thus linked with the past, a successor to the great heroic figures of olden times, the splendid sportsmanship of the whole affair. There is but one first in everything, and that first itself was gloriously the privilege of the American Olympic team of 1896.